Hey everybody, this is Ben with Signal Tech, and today I'm just going to give you a quick demo on how to add and set up your new RGB matrix display. So that's going to include adding the sign, adding new messages in our new RGB message editor, and assigning those messages to a schedule so your sign can just run automatically. Okay, so let's get started. All right, to add a sign, it's pretty simple. Just go up to the top left-hand corner, click Add Device, and it's just gonna ask you for an IP address. Now I'm going to assume that in this point in the process, um, you already have an IP address set, whether that's a static IP on the sign itself or a DHCP reservation. The sign can be configured either way. So enter my IP address here. And the port number is almost always going to be 10,001, unless you have some special network configuration like port forwarding. Um, and then your sign address is always going to be one. That's pretty much for testing purposes only. All right, so click next or press enter. And the software is actually gonna ask the sign for its configuration and for a little picture there. So what we're gonna do now is give it a name and this can be descriptive as to where the sign is. And this particular sign is in our production office. So I'm just gonna say production office sign one. You can put this sign or any of these signs into different groups. Um, you can see I already have groups made up. So I have outdoor signs, office signs, uncategorized. Um, I'm gonna make a new sign group just for the production office here. And not only does that give you the ability to organize your signs, um, but you can also add uh, special permissions to web users uh, as to which sign groups that they can override and, and manage. Okay, and uh, this can run in two separate modes. Uh, just like our Rebel VMS series, you can have sort of a push button mode uh, where you push a button and the sign will say that message indefinitely, or you can set it to a schedule which I'm gonna show you kind of both ways here. I'm gonna leave it on no schedule for now. Um, and of course, time zone. If you have uh, signs that span multiple time zones, you can set that as well. All right, and the sign is now added. Uh, since I didn't add a schedule, it's in push button mode currently. So you can see I have certain messages that have already been made up with the 16 by 64 resolution. So I have good morning and you know, welcome to Signal Tech, drive safely. So. I click a button, sends the message to the sign, and it shows you right here on the status that it's currently saying good morning. Okay, um, so that's pretty simple. Uh, if you just want the sign to be added and used in a push button manner, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, or if you have a more, uh, if you want the sign to be managed you know, automatically on a schedule, then what you wanna do is go to the schedules tab. And the sign that we just added is a 16 by 64 pixel uh, sign. So if you wanna click that here. And the reason it's gotta be specific to each individual sign type or resolution um, is that it's gonna use those messages specific to that resolution. So you can't run a uh, 32 by 128 message on a 16 by 64 sign. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this production office sign. Uh, I'm just gonna have it say, you know, good morning in the morning, uh, welcome to Signal Tech during the day, and then, you know, have a nice night or see you tomorrow or something like that at the end of the day. So I'm just gonna make this schedule, call it uh, Production Office Daily, okay. All right, so you have two different parts to the scheduler. Uh, the top is the weekly perpetual schedule just Sunday through Saturday, 12 to 12, and that's gonna be your normal scheduled programming. Um, for anything that needs to deviate outside of that on a weekly basis, um, you can add overrides. So for holidays or any other circumstance where it's gonna be um, you know, outside of this schedule that you're gonna populate here. Okay, so if you double click inside that matrix, this window is gonna pop up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make this, I'm just gonna make this Sunday through Saturday to make it simple. Okay, and just to make things even more simple, I'm gonna go, let's say 6 a.m., be early birds, to 
Uh, let's go 12 p.m. Okay, and this is going to be my morning message. And like I said, I already have a couple of messages made up. So if you if you do have that in this drop down, it'll appear here. I'm going to make that say good morning. And there we go. Our sign is going to say good morning from 6 a.m. to noon, basically. Okay. Um, and what you can do in this message editor, or this, uh, uh, this schedule editor, you can drag these bars around and you can change the time. It's pretty easy to do. Um, and then you can also copy this element and paste it elsewhere. And, or you can just edit it or you can cut it. Okay, so if I double click on this again, what I'm gonna do is again, Sunday through Saturday. And if you already have schedule blocks uh, populated, then what the scheduler is gonna do is actually default to the next available time slot. So noon, um, let's say, let's see, noon to 4.30 p.m. Okay, and what I wanted to say, let's just say, welcome to Signal Tech, drive safely. Okay, so that's what it's gonna say here. Again, if I wanna change that, you can just click and drag. Um, and it's worth noting that any space outside of these blocks, so anywhere it's blank, uh, the sign will actually be blank as well. Um, so what I wanna do is, I, I'm i just gonna make it be blank from, let's say, 10 p.m. to, let's say, the next morning at 6 a.m., just to save energy. All right, so I double-clicked in here again. And so this time, like I said, I only want it to display, let's say, till 10 o'clock p.m. Click on my drop down, and well, it looks like I'm out of messages. So what I'm going to do is go to new message, and this is going to throw us into our new RGB message editor. Okay. Zoom in so we can see here. Okay. So this interface is pretty simple. Um, just give the message a name. And for this one, I'm just going to have it say, let's say, see you tomorrow. OK. So you have multiple options on your main toolbar up here. Um, you know, Add text, add symbols, add pictures even. Um, and you have your undo, redo, which also have keyboard shortcuts, control Z and control Y. Um, snap to grid and all of your alignment and arrangement options here. And then of course a preview button. Okay. So once you start adding elements, what's going to happen is down here, uh, here's your timeline. So if I add multiple text elements, um, they're all just going to get stacked on this timeline here. So what I want to do is you can have a, well, if you want a, a longer message to display here, you can do a couple of things. Uh, you can either have it scroll. So I'm just going to show that right here. See you tomorrow. By default, uh, text is going to wrap. But if you go down here to the behavior, um, it'll either clip, wrap, or you can scroll one of multiple ways. Okay, and with scrolling, you have multiple options. You can have it scroll faster or slower, um, and you can have it loop multiple times. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to preview it just to see. So that works, um, but I think what I want to do is split this message up. And what I can do here is I can, you know, I can select a one of the pixel perfect fonts to make it fit the screen a little bit better. Let's see. Let's do a large double stroke. I'm going to say see you. I'm going to make that wrap again. See you. And then what I can do on this text element is, and you know what, I'm going to make this shorter. Do that. Finish that out. Make it say tomorrow. And this is where the different font size options come in. So obviously your LED extra large, that's probably not going to work on this screen. Just, a, you know, it'll work on a, a higher resolution display. 
But if we go to large condensed, that works. LED small, that definitely works. Um, but just to maximize our viewing distance here, we're gonna go with the condensed. And let's preview it. Okay, so that's something. Um, but let's uh, let's spice it up a little bit. So we can also add tr add transitions. So if you notice here, I'm clicking down onto the on the timeline. So we have these two text elements, which right now they're just labeled text. But let's just do this real quick. I'm going to label this as CU and this one as tomorrow. Oh. Okay, so now we can see exactly what these text elements say. And you notice if I click on this column on the left here, this will take me to the options for those individual um, text elements. So that's where I can insert date or time or the uh, red storm count, change the font, change the colors and all that good stuff. Now, if I click on this little guy right here, that'll actually give me options for transitions. So what I wanna do here, I'm gonna make it, Let's make it exciting. Let's go zoom in and it'll default to one second. Let's change that to half a second and easing. So what's that, what that's going to do is it's actually going to accelerate or decelerate the animation as it goes along. Um, so ease end, uh, it's going to start out quick and then slow down once it gets to its final position. And I'll do the, uh, let's see, I'm going to make it slide to the left. And then you have the bound setting, which it's used when you have an object that takes up just a portion of the screen. Um, if you make your bounds your object, it's just going to scroll within that object or slide within that object. If you make it the sign, it's going to slide off of the sign completely. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And what I'm going to do is ease start on this one, it's just so the movement looks a little bit more natural. And I'm going to do, oh, well, let's see how that looks first. Zoomed in. Okay. So that looks good as far as I can tell, but I'm going to change the animation on tomorrow. And I'm just going to do the same thing it was doing before. Half a second. Ease end. And let's go fade right. Or, um, I'm sorry. Slide right this time. That'll look good. And ease start. All right, let's try this. See you tomorrow. I kind of like that. Okay, cool. All right, so my message is now finished. And this is a really simple message. Um, but as you can see with the timeline, there's multiple things you could do in terms of uh, layering and effects and all of that cool stuff, which we'll cover later. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll just do a simple message. Um, but once you get into those more complex and lengthier messages, what you can do is actually set the compression level. Um, and that's just because when what happens is that this software will actually create a video to send out to the display and you can choose the level of compression just to save, you know, network bandwidth. Um, but by default, we're at lossless compression. All right. So I'm going to click okay. What that's going to do is go back to the scheduler. Populate from 4.30 to 10 o'clock p.m. And there you go. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do for this particular schedule. So again, just as good morning in the morning, welcome to ST, and then see you tomorrow. And then it's going to be blank the rest of the time, okay? Um, and like I said, with the overrides, you can always add those for holidays and, uh, and other points where it should deviate from this scheduled program. Okay, so if I click OK, there's my schedule, but one more thing that we have to do real quick. If I click on this production office sign once again, I can double click on it. And on this schedule drop down, instead of having it on push button mode, we're now going to have it run that schedule. So I'm going to click OK after doing that. And so now what I should see is what schedule it's running, production office daily, and the status. Like I said, you can also do you can do scheduled overrides or you can do a manual override. So if I need it to say something else right this very instant, um, 
say see you tomorrow. I can choose that. I can choose the expiration date and time. Click OK. And my sign is overridden. Okay, just like your standard smart signs if you've ever worked with the software before. So we'll remove that and let it do its thing. But that's it for this video. Keep an eye out for things we'll be covering in the future. And again, this is Ben with Signal Tech, and thanks for watching. See you next time.